There's a person on the internet who calls herself Shoe on Head. And I always wanted to roast her because uh, she blocked me on Twitter and I'm petty. The reason she blocked me is because she had posted a picture uh, a while back of a, of a little kid interacting with this adult and the adult was dressed in some kind of leather dog outfit and she claimed this was some kind of kink thing and this was happening at gay pride parades all over the country but I had been to a gay pride parade that year and I didn't see any kids. This was in Vegas. Um, I didn't see any kids. I saw uh, a, a Randy Macho Man Savage impersonator. That was about the weirdest thing I saw. She fancies herself as a protector of children, this shoe on head. <clears throat> but she is surprisingly silent about the death of Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor was an angelic singer, a brilliant arranger, and a great songwriter. She wrote a song called Black Boys on Mopeds that brings tears to my eyes. She took a Prince song that nobody had ever noticed before and arranged it and used her voice to turn it into a worldwide hit. Um, but, as expected, the thing that she was remembered for the most in the media was uh, her very public protest against systemic sexual abuse in the Catholic Church. This, at the time, was verboten in this country. You were not allowed to talk about it in this country. And uh, she was metaphorically burned at the stake. And not a word from any of these people who want to protect your kids from drag queens. Odd, isn't it? Um... Not a word from the Sound of Freedom fans. You know, Jim Caviezel, the QAnon Jesus, he said, God's children aren't for sale. He's a protector of children. But he didn't say a word about Sinead, and Shoe on Head did not say a word about Sinead. But Shoe on Head does have a few words in defense of QAnon Jesus. But I wonder what the actor thinks of it because he believes in something else. We were so close to actually reviewing the actual movie. The actor has taken to repeating the most grotesque falsehoods of the sprawling QAnon ideology, among them that traffickers are harvesting children's organs. Yep. Compared to this nonsense, Sound of Freedom is relatively grounded in our universe. Okay. But that mainstream accessibility makes it a valuable recruitment tool. A valuable recruitment tool? Oh no, if you watch the Sound of Freedom, you're gonna go down the right-wing rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe uh, if you Google Sound of Freedom and Jim Caviezel, you will find interviews with Jim Caviezel, and Jim Caviezel will be talking about adrenochrome. It's not unlike when, um, it's not unlike when uh, 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 Tom Cruise was promoting War of the Worlds a few years back, and uh, he used that opportunity to uh, recruit for Scientology. It, uh, it's the reason why he's never been in a uh, Steven Spielberg uh, movie since. <clears throat> you know, Shuan Head herself has been accused of recruiting for uh, being a gateway to right-wing uh, rabbit holes. So that's why she's followed by libs of TikTok, I believe. Um, you know, feigning ignorance is not a good debate tactic. I gotta say, I've been coming across this uh, lately. Um, pretending, playing dumb, it might work when you want to troll people, but if you play dumb as a debate tactic, people will just assume that you're dumb after a while. You went on message board Great Awakening this week. Adherence celebrated the movie's box office success. Damn, that's crazy, bro. I wouldn't know that because I don't go on QAnon message boards like you apparently do. I love oh, so in other words, you don't do research. She doesn't do research. That's what she's bragging about. She does not research any of the things that she's talking about. That's her, that's her boast. She simply relies on a chirpy cartoon voice and way too many jump cuts to present her case. The reason you don't hear about her talking about Sinead, the reason you don't hear about any of the right talking about Sinead, Sinead O'Connor, or celebrating the life of Sinead O'Connor, is because, it's for the exact same reason, these same people are down in Texas drowning refugee children.
under the orders of Greg Abbott, the Republican governor. They don't actually care about your kids. The right does not care about your children or anyone's children, even their own children. They don't have the necessary empathy or spirit or soul in order to perform, to have such feelings. What they do is they use those perfectly reasonable, legit concerns that average people have about children. And they point those concerns in the direction that is most beneficial to their agenda. So in the case of this movie, The Sound of Freedom, that she's talking about, um, it's xenophobia. That's the agenda. In the case of Jim Caviezel, it's anti-Semitism. In the case of somebody like Tim Poole or somebody like Shoe on Head, it's homophobia. Because once an anti-SJW, always an anti-SJW, you don't get to redeem yourself after trying to destroy people's lives for money. Because you said, please forgive me, I'm left wing now. Not in my book. Once an anti-SJW, always an anti-SJW. Once a Sinead detractor, always a Sinead detractor. And if you're a Sinead detractor, then you're a defender of the systemic abuse of the Catholic Church. That would include SNL. That would include NBC. That would include Joe Pesci. Why was he so obsessed with getting into that house? He could have robbed any house on Kevin's block. But for some reason, he found out little Kevin is all alone in that house and he just had to get into that house. A little suspicious. It's no wonder he got triggered the next week on SNL while hosting SNL and threatened to beat up Sinead O'Connor. Yeah, speaking of which, speaking of not forgiving... You know, about a week later, uh, Sinead O'Connor went to the Bob Dylan uh, tribute concert to perform with Neil Young, Chris Christopherson, Pearl Jam. And she got booed. But people have to keep in mind, Bob Dylan fans boo Bob Dylan. I mean, they booed him when he went electric. And if there's two things that Bob Dylan fans hate more than anything else in this world, it's one, electric guitars, and two, people telling them that they can't fuck kids. 